Fernando's dropped off another hydraulic cylinder, another cylinder off one of his tractors. Said it blew a seal here that's leaking oil, so hopefully it's just going to be a simple uh, seal repair. Got to get it apart, unscrew the gland, pull everything out. I need to take my drill and open up the two holes there, and we'll use our adjustable face spanner to get in there and grab onto the gland and unscrew it. The two holes were kind of collapsed a little bit, so I just took my drill and a 5 16 drill bit, just opened them up some. So now we got our fitment on our adjustable face spanner. I got a pan down there to help catch any oil that might fall out of here. I think there's still a little bit left in it. This is why I like to use the company is called Pig P I G, and they have different uh, types of matting. This one right here is for oil and water. You can get the white one, which is just for oil. It won't pick up water, and they work really good. It's a lot cleaner and neater than your uh, standard oil dry that makes a mess and gets dust everywhere. Usually you can just kind of lay this stuff down. If you have a, a puddle of oil or anything like that, you can just lay it down and it'll just completely soak it all up. So I'm going to leave that. I'm just mop, kind of mopping up the heavy and then I'm going to I'm going to lay that down there and it'll help pull that right up out of the floor there. So we got to get our the, the nut off the rod here, remove the piston. That way we can slide the rod gland down off and then we can get all of our seals off. I know that that needs to be replaced and all of your gland seals need to be replaced. But the most important thing that I found by taking this out is you can see all of these scratches right there. See that see there, there, and there. Those old gouges. That causes premature failure on your rod seals. This is not good. Okay, besides an age-related failure where they deteriorate and fail, you have bad places that score scores the seals and the bore of the gland so this is something that needs to be addressed and I'm gonna find out how far into it that he would like me to go uh, if he would like me to machine a new rod that's that's the proper way to fix it if not then we can polish this and get the high spots off and put some new seals on it and it'll get them back going so there's your main sealing components there this is your rod gland and then you've got your piston here so as far as the piston goes, that is a PTFE seal that has a rubber expander underneath the bottom of it. That's, it's like a square O-ring that helps uh, expand it out and, and push against the cylinder wall. And that's, it's not in bad shape. It's, it's still working, but anytime you go through a hydraulic cylinder, you always just replace all the soft parts if you're going to go through the trouble of taking it apart. You also have a very small uh, zero series O-ring here that goes on the inside of the the piston there that seals it against your <clears throat> the where the threads are where it slides onto the threads it keeps the oil from coming through the center of the piston so it's not bypassing there okay so we'll look at this is your rod gland now remember i was showing the on the rod it had some scoring and some scratches and things like that you know dents and gouges it's been hit that will show up in your rod gland here let's see if we can find that there's several spots you can see it rubbing one of them was was pretty good there it is right in there let's see right in there it's going to run right through there and right into your rod seal and start cutting and wearing into your rod seal and you see some more of it as i rotate it around so scratches and gouges on a chrome rod is not good for your gland, not good for your seals. 
So up here on the top, this is your rod wiper, and all its function is is to wipe the rod as it's sliding up and down to remove any contaminants, dirt, dust, anything on it. And they get pretty abused and pretty worn. You can see up in there how badly worn it is. So that'll definitely be replaced there too. So we're just going to go ahead and replace all the seals. This is your, your tube seal here. And so this will seal the oil from, from bypassing the outside of the gland and coming through your threads and out of the cylinder there. I'll get them all out and we'll size them up and, and get those coming and uh, we're going we're gonna to make a new rod for this hydraulic. I talked to Fernando and he says that he would like a new rod. Let's, let's fix it up right. So I got to get some, that's inch and a half diameter rod stock. I need to get some of that and we'll, we'll build a new hydraulic rod. I wanted to go ahead and try to give you a better shot of the scratches on the chrome rod using the, the, the Sony. So you can see them right in here. And there's some more. There's another big one right there. And then up here you got a section that's actually missing the chrome. So it got hit pretty good right there and the chrome is completely gone. So all that is areas of bypass for your, uh, you know, for your seals. You can just see it right there in the camera how it's raised up around the, the scratches and dents. All right, so that's the reason we're going to replace it. You need to, anytime you have a cylinder like this, if you put new seals on this, it's going to work. It's going to get you by for a while, but you're going to wear it prematurely and you're going to start, you're going to start having leaking problems again really, really soon. I got the rod stock today for the, the hydraulic rod we got to make for this hydraulic cylinder. This is the, the new inch and a half stock right here. So this is, I get a lot of questions about this material right here and also the, the tubing. So hopefully you guys are watching that have all those questions. This material right here, uh, I bought this through work. You know, we have a hydraulic shop at work there and we stock chrome bar stock and home tubing as well different size home tubing not not a bunch of them but with different stuff but anyway we buy that through scott industries right here so if if anybody out there if you have a shop and you're looking for material you can contact scott industries i believe this location that we buy from is talladega alabama they have a, a warehouse there and you can get any kind of material that has to do with building hydraulic cylinder components. So rod stock tubing, ductile iron, bronze, uh, probably even um, some shaft stock too, but we also buy that heavy wall tubing there as well. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of throw it out there for the guys that's always questioning me about that. So I bought this from our own inventory uh, for this job right here. So we're gonna go ahead and slide it up in there. We're gonna give a, we're gonna give the three jaw chuck a try on this. I wanna see how it does and how well it holds this chrome stock. This is how I usually handle shorter and you know easy to manage pieces when I want to slide it through the chuck like this. I usually leave the sleeve on if it won't interfere with the bore of the spindle and do like this. So that tubing kind of protects the, the bar stock from getting scratched on the jaws of the chuck right there. And then just kind of slide it out some and wipe it off with your hand or rag whatever to get the dust off of it. And then go ahead and slide it back up in there some. So one end, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to face it, chamfer it, probably drill and tap it for a little threaded pin or something like that. All right, let's put an indicator on there and see what kind of run out we're showing. Not too bad, it looks like about a thou. You get it to where it's a little easier for the camera to see it. So about a thousandth, maybe just a little bit more than that. And then you see how the needle is kind of moving around erratically. That is your surface finish. It's not a perfectly round surface on those chrome bars. They're just 
belt sanded. Drilling and tapping for a quarter twenty bolt. That's the thread I'm going to use, just a, a soft grade of bolt. I'll just cut that off with a hacksaw. And the reason why set screws are really, really convenient to use on this, but since I've been in the hydraulic shop, what I've learned is a lot of the cylinders that you work on eventually come back to you. So there's times where you're actually having to go in there and make a new rod but you want to reuse the the big piece of steel that's on the end of it you know a big rod eye and so you set this in a bandsaw to cut it off right here and then you get in you get down in there and then you tear your bandsaw blade up because there's either a set screw in there that you know a set screw or either a roll pin and both of those are hard and they tear your blade up so to try to prevent tearing the bandsaw blades up this is what i use right here just a a soft thread you know you can get a an all thread from uh, wherever and use that too I went ahead and flipped it around and we're gonna I got a quarter inch to face off that to get it down to about the right length it needs to be I kicked the speed up here this is 600 rpm take about a sixteenth of pass on the face here. I'm just looking to see how how true it's running on the end here. So we got it's about a thousandth. We still got like a thousandth there too. We're gonna set our shoulder length here. All right, so we gotta turn it down a half inch. We're gonna go down to one inch diameter and thread it for a 14 pitch. So that's a hundred thousandths cut right there, hundred thousandths metal removal, and we're running 600 RPM. And I believe I got the feed set at 10, 10 thousandths per rev. I'll check that here in just a sec. Let me see, we got it in B, B3. I'm at uh, 9.3. 9.3 thousandths uh, per revolution is the feed right there. We could step it over to one, or uh, we'll go one notch over and that'll be 10.3. That's a pretty medium feed rate right there for uh, medium machining and getting close to your finishing without being too aggressive with it. Let's just mention that real quick. Let me turn that off. Whenever I'm doing turning, the general numbers that I have in my mind, if you're gonna make a finish cut, it's five thousandths. If you're making, if you're just doing some general turning like this and getting some metal off and you don't wanna be too crazy aggressive, I go with 10 thousandths. And if you're, if you've got the rigidity, you know, with your chuck and everything, and you're moving some metal, You'll, you'll want to go like 15 thousandths to 20 thousandths or, or even more, just depending on your, your machine. So usually somewhere in the range of 5 to 10 thousandths is, is the, the feed rate that I'm normally at.
So that was four cuts at a hundred thousandths per cut. We're going to go ahead and give it a mic and see. So we should have about a hundred thousandths left to go, a little bit less. All right, so we got, that's 97 thousandths to bring it to one inch. I want to finish it two under, so I'll back that barrel off one thousandths right there. And what I'm going to take is 99, 99 thousandths. And we'll see if we finish it that uh, two, two thousandths under. Just kind of like a little game you play with yourself. All right, so dial it in. 99. And as I usually do when I get to that shoulder, I'm going to go in five thousandths and then feed it back by hand to clean that face up. Okay, we'll see if I hit it or if I made a fool of myself. Okay, about one and a half under. One and a half, so uh, I was off by a half a thousandths. <laughs> but I think that's close enough. So there's a, the thread is gonna be, you know, in this area right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and skin that. A few, a few more thousandths up to a certain point you know I'll go over and measure it and then we'll uh, do our chamfers and start threading it I realized after that last clip what what I failed to, to mention is the reason why I was taking a few more thousandths is that normally whenever you're finishing your your diamond or for your thread you always want to make it like at least five thousandths under your nominal size okay I wanted this uh, two under because that's what the old one measures and that way you have a better fit on your piston it's not too wobbly and you know an off center but you need a little bit of clearance for your thread so I just skimped that and just stopped it and turned the camera on all right and we're five thousandths under one inch there so this tool here the MCK and R is uh, the perfect tool using that 100 degree angle right there the 100 degree corner of the CNMG insert that's the perfect tool for cutting the angles and the the chamfers on hydraulic rods for seals to slide up over and that's what we use that one for a lot you know you can also use it for facing it's great for that but it is the perfect angle for that kind of stuff right there I might have to slow it down a little bit we'll try 600 and see if that'll not chatter on me, we're going to make it about, about 3 sixteenths wide. A little bit low. Nothing too critical on something like that. 3 16 wide. I just eyeballed it. But what I want to try to do is just touch it because it's got that not the best finish on it. So we're going to hit it really quick. didn't really help if you can feed that tool in there really hard and fast and then back out it'll usually leave you a really nice finish on there all right we got our cross slide set to zero we're going to touch all of the compound zero it out all right let's make our scratch pass And we're cutting a 14 pitch. So we're correct on our pitch. Make sure everything lines up good again. Oh yeah.
I do like a little bit of oil when I'm doing this just to help keep the the chip from gone and it helps leave a little better surface finish there. Just give it a quick check. I'm I'm not quite there, but I always like to double check. So yeah, that's the nut by the way. And it's a lock nut, so I won't be able to screw it all the way on there. It's pinched on this end here. knocking the burrs off the top of the thread. Really close, that's a super close finish. So we need to go ahead and take a little bit more off. I'll go ahead and dial in two thousandths on the compound here. And we'll try it again. All right, that should be it right there. I just need to do a little bit of polishing with some fine emery on, on this surface right here and the top of the threads and we'll be done with the machine work.